Hi guys, happy new year. I know we are far gone into the year. January is almost over, but this is me officially saying happy new year. And I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Happy new year. Please ignore the state of my fireworks, guys. Who wants to see behind the scenes? <laughs> Just coming back from church, so exhausted and tired. Um, even carrying my bag, like I want to go to sleep, but I have to go make food now for everybody. There was a tree here, there was a tree there, but it's been cut off. These are my brothers down there. Um, that's my father down there, <laughs> that's my auntie. I give you my food. I went to the stream of my father asking to get some fruits for him. He is unwell. <laughs> You look, you look as ripe as that mango. <laughs> <laughs> my prince! I am going to really keep it to see. My prince, you flatter me! <laughs> my prince, I won't have it to you! <laughs> <laughs> my prince! Go for me! You must be checked in! I love it! I remember you some look away, you see the game. I want to have a seal. Yes, I am I calling you? You're calling me. I'm very very cold. I came to the forest, the garden of fruits. <laughs> this is my bodyguard, by the way. Bodyguard? Yeah, what are you calling Mother, I am coming. So we wanted something more exciting and my dad offered to take us to the famous Eze River in our village. Uh, come with us and I'm sure you enjoy it. So we are here. We had to park our car at our grandpa's compound because the road to the stream is not very motorable so we had to walk there. The camera woman and my sister behind me. Hi guys, and day one is... And day one! <laughs> Trying to set up my devices. Battery is a bit low. So we're actually heading down to the stream. Um, it's called the Eze River. It's not too far, and it's always usually like a narrow road. You okay. get. I don't know how. It's been a while, and we came down this path. So, yeah, come with us. So how do we get across? Mm -hmm. How do we get across the stream? So, we decided to take a look at some of the beautiful huts around the area and appreciate the scenery and our roots. Yeah, we're back on our journey to the Eze River. Jaguar. We are here and this is the famous Eze River. It serves as a very useful source of water to the Ugweke community. As you can see, a lot of people are having their baths and washing their clothes. Um, children also come here to swim during leisure time and it's quite dear to the community. Here we have our city girl. No tickets. Since we died. Yeah. Here we have the famous Ike Butch. Easy, 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 guys. 
Ayan. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna have the contest crystal. Dive to yourself. Hi. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to have my dad tell us about um, the Eze River, that is some curious things about this special river. Okay, uh, we are here, the mighty Eze River. Never mind what you are seeing now, it might look shallow, but I assure you that this river you are seeing can overflow East Bank and get to the houses that you saw. The houses we saw on our way here. Those houses will be submerged by this as you are seeing. So this river can overflow and you know cause havoc for about a week or more. But the curious thing about it is that whenever it drowns someone, automatically the river begins to recede. That happens always. This is a special river. It has its own history. It obeys the custom, it knows the people. You see, in this river you are seeing, you have crocodiles living here. And this is the only place you can find a bilateral relationship between man and animal, like temporary ceasefire. There's something we call a what is, that is fishing expedition. It's done by women, principally. The women go at a time, particular time in the year, fishing with their nets. As they move along, the men come a distance away. And what the men do, they call that one Mparo. The name is Onamatapoik. Just the, the way it sounds, Mparo. Because the women are so large, the river is muddied that the fishes now get the mud inside their eyes. So all the men have to do is just to use the, their machet and start hitting the fishes. Mparo, Mparo, that's the way it sounds in the water. So that's what they do. But for these women to make the river safe, about four old women precede the women coming to fish. These four women will now throw praise names to the crocodiles in this river. Normal. One young man. Praise the crocodiles and tell them we have come to do what our grandmothers did before now. We have come to fish at this time. That is our own time to fish. Please allow us. And they will bring the crocodiles out. Lay them just by the bank of the river. This river you are seeing. And all they need to do is just to collect a log of wood, small log of wood, and place at the back of each of the crocodiles. That is the whole excuse they need to take. Those crocodiles will remain there until the fishing expedition is done. Until the women have passed, fished along this area, and come back and remove the log from the backs of the crocodiles and carry them back into their hollows. That is the end of the ceasefire. If you come there the next day, and it's not a fishing expedition. Not a what you day. You can be their breakfast. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. And we, if we see them the next day, we can also hunt them down. But that day of a what there is a ceasefire. And the crocodiles understand it. You, the you Emo Wame what he also understand that. Do you know the person who takes the largest uh, collection of fish home? No. The, the person who does that is one little girl, a virgin, selected in the community. That virgin stays at the square, village square. Every single woman going for equity will pass through that girl. The girl will spit on the uh, net, the woman's net, and say, Ide bu bu. that is good fishing, that you will you, you be lucky. Every single woman goes there, the little girl just spits, the woman thanks her and goes. So after the fishing, every woman who has gone for the equity, returns through that same route and gives about the largest fish, a very sensible fish, to that uh, little girl. So her basket wouldn't take time, it will fill up. The mother will, of course, rush it, carry that one home, put it under basket. And so at the end of the day, that girl collects the largest quantity of uh, fish. So you see that um, it's profitable to be a virgin. It has always been so in Igbo land. That girl becomes a... <laughs> The, the highest fisher, fisherwoman without even stepping into the river. So this river has fed men. The water, I tell you, the way you are seeing this water is it's not white. You see, it's almost like tea. 
People are addicted to it. There are people who live in, you know, in Ababa who come home to collect this water and go home. For what? And go to, no, they can't. They, 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 they value it more than the uh, water. They value this water? Yes. The, like, what, they fetch it for bathing or for what? For drinking. They come with jerry cans and carry this same water to Ababa. Some people are addicted to it. They don't, they don't miss it. So, and I said there's a joke when they say that the water is rich. And I said, why wouldn't it be rich in impurity? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, no, but it's, it's good. It has never killed anybody. It's so, it's so nice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, okay, guys. Hope you enjoy the story behind our river. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. I would love to have you guys back for the next episode. Thank you. This has actually been an amazing experience. And hearing that crocodiles actually live here, that's very, I don't know, that's very scary. And I'm just right here, you know, at the bank of the river. And um, here it's hot. I was expecting that, you know, here it's hot. Like, it's actually very hot. I was expecting a cool breeze. But I think this weather is not really favorable. So guys, we were done from the Eze River and we decided to go through another route just to explore the area. While coming back from the river expedition, we saw that this is an abandoned oil mill. Um, our maintenance culture in Nigeria is very bad. It was actually mismanaged by, I don't know whether it's the villagers or whoever who was brought here for empowerment, but maintenance has always been our being.